This is not a horror movie. The four horsemen are coming, and this is who they are. Number one, the white horse. Now the identity of this man will shock you. The Bible says, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out, conquering and to conquer. It's true, isn't it? In Hollywood, often we notice that the good guy, the hero, rides into town on a white horse. Right at the end of Revelation, in the final Final battle. Our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, he rides to battle on a white horse. And yet, I don't believe this rider is the good guy. Many Christians believe that this rider is the Lord Jesus Christ, but personally, I think this rider is the Antichrist. Wow, Joe, that is a big claim to make. How could you say something like that? I might be wrong about this, but I do notice that when this rider arrives on his white horse, he wears a temporary crown, a wreath that will one day wilt and wither. And as he arrives on the scene, he ushers in the tribulation, and what follows is much pain, much suffering, much chaos. And behind him are three other cursed horses, who again bring more and more carnage. But when Christ, when Christ arrives on his white horse, he doesn't just wear a temporary crown, though he has many many crowns, and when he arrives he comes to bring peace to the earth, to end all of the carnage, and behind him are not three cursed horses, but all the heavenly hosts who are here to set up the kingdom on earth, where Christ will rule and reign. Okay, let me warn you, what I'm about to say next is a very unusual interpretation of the Antichrist. So know this, this interpretation, this perspective comes with a warning. But don't think it's fascinating that we read that this rider arrives with a bow in his hand. And note this, the bow does not have any arrows in it. Now this is why Bible commentators say that this man cannot be Christ and is probably the Antichrist because when Christ arrives on the scene on his white horse, he has a sword. But that word bow comes from the Greek word toxin, and that word toxin has a few meanings to it. Yes, it can mean like a bow that an archer uses with arrows in it, but it can also have another meaning. It can mean rainbow. Just like in the days of Noah when God flooded the earth and then after it was all over, what does it say? God put a bow in the clouds as a way of saying I've made a covenant with mankind. I will never flood the earth again. So again, just to emphasize, this is Joe Kirby's interpretation and I could be totally off on this. But could it be? Could it be that when the Antichrist arrives on his white horse in his hand, he is holding a rainbow, and anyone who does not bow down to the agenda of the Antichrist, to his system, that person is a problem, and they will need to be dealt with. But hey now, I don't want to say much more on the Antichrist because many of you, I expect, have already seen my Antichrist video where I talk about who I think the Antichrist is. But I will say this, the word Antichrist means instead of Christ, in the place of Christ. And that is exactly what he's going to do. He's going to be a copycat. He's going to try and deceive the people into making people believe that he really is the saviour of the world. And so it makes sense that he would try to resemble Christ by riding on on a white horse. But note this, every single one of us must be vigilant, because remember, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. Okay, number two, the second rider sits on a fiery red horse. The Bible says, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. One thing that I think Hollywood does do accurately is it often paints the devil in the colour red. Why is that true? Well, if we look at Revelation, Satan himself is represented as a red dragon. In Revelation later, in chapter 17, we notice that this wicked woman, this evil woman, sits on top of a scarlet beast, and she herself is clothed in red and purple. And then if we flip back, if we go back thousands of years ago, the Lord says to the prophet Isaiah, your sins are scarlet, 
they're red. So here we have a red horse, and I believe this is a picture of Satan. You see, that horse will have one job. When that horse gallops through the earth, it will do one thing. It will destroy any peace that is on the earth. Any peace treaties that the Antichrist has set up will be destroyed. This horse will gallop, and wherever it goes, wherever it stampedes, it will leave bloodshed. It won't be like today, where one country might know peace and safety, but another will know conflict. No, every single country in the world will be in war, will be in battle, and all peace, all safety will vanquish until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. Just before we look at the black horse, I do think it's worth saying this. Many pastors, many theologians who I respect and look up to would not hold the same position as I would when I read Revelation rather literally. They would say, it says in Zechariah chapter 1, that there is a, a red horse and there's a rider on that horse and he goes to and fro across the earth. Right now there is a rider going to and fro on the earth. And they would read passages like this in Revelation and say, right now as we speak, there are wars happening. Right now as we speak, there are some people who are going through a sort of tribulation. These events have already happened. And although I personally do believe in a literal seven year tribulation, I do want to say this, I could be wrong. And I think all of us who preach the word, who look at the things of God, should tremble as we hold these precious truths in our hands. And we should remember that we're all fallen men. We all make mistakes and none of us is sufficient to teach the word of God, really. Okay, number three, the third rider will sit on a black horse. The Bible says, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. You know, just like world history teaches us, after war comes a shortage of food. And that's exactly what's happening here. People can't find bread to eat. Food is scarce and people have to start rationing out because the people in the tribulation have very little to eat. In fact, men and women in the tribulation will work all day long to try and provide for their families. And it is at this point that the Antichrist will exploit the people. There he will set up his system and he will control the economy and the masses will do what he says when there are billions and billions who are so hungry they will do what the Antichrist wishes. But also remember this, just like today, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We notice something else, that the rich people sort of cry out, make sure you don't harm the oil. Make sure you look after the wine. And while all the poor people are starving, the rich will sit in their balconies, eating fine food and drinking wine. Number four, the fourth horseman will ride on a sickly pale horse. The Bible says, so I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades followed with him and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death and by the beasts of the earth. The word here to describe this horse is the word chloros. What does that mean? Well, just like the man or the woman who spends loads of time at the swimming pool and forgets to wash the chlorine out of their hair, what colour does their hair turn? It turns green. Obviously, I don't have that kind of problem. But you get the idea. This horse, it looks green, it looks sickly, it looks pale, it looks ill. And as this horse gallops through the earth, the Bible says that one fourth of the population will be wiped out. So if that was today, nearly two billion people would be taken out by hunger, by plagues and by the beasts of the earth. Here's a question for you. What do you think those beasts of the earth are? Well, it's really important to remember this, that all scripture is God breathed. All scripture is good. It's profitable to read for all generations of Christians. So Christians thousands of years ago, when they read the book of Revelation, they should be able to take encouragement and comfort. And likewise, right now today, there is no passage in the Old Testament that is irrelevant to us. We should be encouraged and built up by all of the Bible. And I do wonder, do you remember years ago in the Roman Empire when Christians were thrown in front of lions? There many Romans sat in their amphitheatres and Christians were mauled alive. I do wonder if 
The believers back then would read these passages in Revelation and they draw some sense of comfort from it knowing, yes, this is what we are to expect. We're not promised a prosperous life in this earth. No, we're promised tribulation. We don't actually know what size these beasts are. We don't know how big they are. Yes, they might be ferocious lions and yes, maybe the amphitheaters might come back. But there is something else to consider. What if these beasts are small? What if they're like rats that carry diseases or other creatures that we've been hearing about recently? Or what if these beasts of the earth are even microscopic and they bring a plague? to all of mankind. I don't know, but there is one thing I do know. This pale horse has two riders, and one of the riders is called Death, and the other of the riders is called Hades. And if you fear Death and Hades, I want to tell you about a man who holds the keys to both. This man did not arrive to earth on a grand mighty horse. No, he humbled himself and he rode on a lowly donkey. This man, he made himself absolutely nothing for you and me because our sins are so great, our sins are so wicked. All of that was laid on Christ. It was transferred on him and there Christ suffered the death that we deserve to die. There Christ was punished and absorbed the wrath of God so that you and I can be forgiven. There Christ on the cross met death the grave Sheol. He was plunged into them all, but then on the third day he rose from the dead, showing that he's triumphant, showing that he is the boss over death, and he is the one that we can trust and obey because he's conquered the grave. And I'm confident of this. If today, this very day, you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a promise that when you die, you will hear galloping. You'll hear the chariots of heaven coming down to take you up into the presence of the Lord. And that is a wonderful promise to anyone who puts their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if today you ignore the Lord Jesus Christ, if today you decide to continue in your rebellion and you refuse to turn away from your sins, you also have a promise. The one who holds the keys to death and Hades, it says in the Bible that one day this same God will cast both of them, death and Hades, into the lake of fire. And all those who have not had their name written in the book of life will also follow after into the lake of fire. And there they will be trapped in hell forever. Friends, I don't want that for you. And I plead with you today that right now, if you call out to the Lord Jesus Christ, you too could have your name written in the book of life, eternal life secured, heaven assured, and you have a hope that you will meet the warrior Christ, the Christ on his white horse, mighty, triumphant, and he is your captain and you will live for him for all of eternity. If you want evidence for it, Standing before you is a man who has been greatly saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. And if I can use the pun, you've heard it here. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. But one more thing, if you haven't yet watched this video of Satan's greatest hoax, the lie that he's deceiving millions of people into believing that they are going to heaven, please click this video now. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you find these videos helpful, please do consider subscribing. I'd be so grateful to see you again. God bless you all and thank you for watching.